Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Omende, and I'm going to discuss olfactory region and limbic system on behalf of Professor Ibibi. So, um, just to, to begin with, the receptors for olfaction are usually bipolar neurons in the olfactory mucosa, and they are first-order neurons. So, the axons of the olfactory cells usually form what we call the phyla olfactoria, and these pass through the cribriform plates of the ethmoid bone to enter the olfactory bulb. So um, we have the bipolar neurons that are usually in the, uh, at the roof of the nasal cavity because that's where that's the location of the olfactory mucosa. So in this case, this is these are our first order neurons. So um, if you look at this diagram here, that's the nasal cavity and the roof of the nasal cavity has the olfactory epithelium. So those are the first order neurons and they're going to relay at the olfactory bulb. So um, a magnification of that image that shows you the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone where the uh, olfactory cells will pass through and that's the olfactory mucosa. So the olfactory mucosa histologically usually has three types of cells. So we have the basal cells for regeneration and these are the support cells that support the olfactory cells and these are the bipolar neurons which are the olfactory um uh, the sorry first order olfactory um neurons in the olfactory pathway so these are the ones that are carrying the smell sensation to the brain so bipolar neuron meaning we have two processes that are coming from the cell body and the central process is what passes through the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone to go to the brain. So the primary olfactory fibers usually synapse with dendritic terminals of the mitral cells to form the olfactory glomeruli. And the neurons in the olfactory uh, glomeruli are mitral cells, tufted cells, and the granule cells. So these first order neurons will synapse with the mitral cells within the olfactory glomeruli. Then the axons of the mitral and tuft cells will now form our second order neurons and this will project to the deeper layers of the olfactory bulb and merge to form the olfactory tract. So the olfactory tract passes towards the anterior perforated substance and later divide into a lateral and medial olfactory stria. So if you're to follow, um, this is the olfactory mucosa with the support cells, basal cells, and the bipolar neurons, which are the olfactory neurons. So they will pass through the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone to the olfactory glomeruli. And here they are going to relay on mitral and tuft cells. So those form the second order neurons. And the axons of mitral and tuft cells, as you can see, they will form the olfactory tract. And the olfactory tract will continue to the anterior perforated substance where it will divide into lateral and medial olfactory stri. So the lateral olfactory stria will pass along the lateral margin of anterior perforated substance to reach the piriform region. And the piriform region, also called the piriform cortex, together with the periamygdaloid area, form the primary olfactory cortex. So primary olfactory uh, cortex is formed by the piriform cortex and the periamygdaloid area. And this piriform cortex we had discussed earlier, it's located at the um, rostral portion of the uh, parahippocampal gyrus as well as the anchors and the lateral olfactory stria. So piriform cortex usually will project to the entorhinal cortex, the lateral and basal amygdaloid nuclei, the lateral preoptic area, the nucleus of diagonal band which is the posterior margin of the anterior perforated substance as well as the mediodorsal nucleus of the thalamus. And this nucleus of the thalamus usually projects to the orbitofrontal cortex and also merges with the limbic system. The medial olfactory stria, on the other hand, usually ends in the anterior perforated substance and some cross to the opposite side through the anterior commissure. So that just shows you, you have the olfactory receptor uh, cells relaying at the olfactory glomerulus onto mitral and tuft cells, whose axons will join and form the olfactory. Uh, here we have mitral and tuft cells whose axons will join and form the olfactory tract, which divides into a lateral stria and a medial stria. You can see the medial stria sends some fibers to the um, contralateral side through the anterior commissure, while the lateral stria 
relays onto the primary olfactory cortex, which is the uh, anterior portion of the parahippocampus and the anchors. So this is what we call the piriform cortex that neighbors the anterior perforated substance. Again, that diagram just shows you from the olfactory bulb, you have the tract that divides into lateral stria and medial stria. The medial stria projects to the contralateral side as um, through the anterior commissure, while the lateral stria um, projects onto the anchors and the anterior portion of the parahippocampus. And together with the lateral stria, they form the piriform, the piriform cortex. So that's the anterior perforated substance. It's found between the two limbs, or rather the two stria of the olfactory tract. Again, the diagram shows you the um, olfactory cell, the bipolar olfactory cell in the olfactory mucosa will cross through cribriform plates and into the olfactory bulb where it relays on mitral and taft cells whose axons will form the olfactory tract that goes and divides into a lateral stria and a medial stria. So the lateral stria will project onto the entorhinal area and the primary uh, olfactory cortex which has the piriform cortex and the olfactory tubercle. They also project onto the amygdaloid complex. So from um, the primary olfactory cortex, you can also project to the septal area and the mediodosal nucleus of thalamus that usually relays onto the orbitofrontal cortex. So from the olfactory bulb, you can project onto the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, and the frontal cortex. So when you project onto the frontal cortex, you have the conscious perception of smell. If you project onto the hypothalamus, remember hypothalamus controls emotions. So there's the emotional aspect of smell and the hippocampus gives you a memory of the odor. So when you perceive that smell, you're able to remember that that is a smell of a certain thing. So because of the projection of the hippocampus, hippocampus that gives you some odor memory. So again, from olfactory cell to olfactory nerve, project to the bulb, relay onto mitral and taft cells, whose axons will form olfactory tract that divides into a lateral stria and a medial stria. The medial stria projects onto the septal nuclei as well as the hypothalamus and the limbic system, while the lateral stria may project onto the piriform cortex, entorhinal area, and amygdala, and these are linked to the limbic system, while um, the projections to the thalamus will relay onto the orbitofrontal cortex. So, um, phylogenetically, it, during evolution, the olfactory uh, sensations were relayed first onto the limbic system and hypothalamus, that's the old olfactory system. Then with more evolution, we had more projections onto the piriform cortex and entorhinal cortex as well as the amygdala. And these also form part of the limbic system, but there is an aspect in which the hippocampus is involved. And then later on with evolution, there are projections onto the orbitofrontal cortex to give the consciousness, uh, conscious awareness of smell. So clinically, um, uh, on the olfactory pathway, you need to remember that these nerves pass through the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone, and hemorrhage or fracture of this bone uh, can lead to hemorrhage at the, uh, or hemorrhage at the base of the frontal lobe can tear the olfactory filaments, and these will impair the olfactory sense of smell. The olfactory nerve may also be involved in meningitis or abscess of the frontal lobe, and you can also get anosmia, unilateral anosmia, this is lack of sensation of smell on one side of the nasal cavity due to meningioma of the sphenoidal ridge or olfactory growth. Olfactory hallucinations can also occur in lesions of the parahippocampal gyrus and anchors. So in the next lecture, we'll discuss on the limbic system. Thank you very much.